Hi, I'm Siwa Billy Rose Amador Laveau, and I'm here with my co-host, Craig Pasqua. Hi, Rose. Welcome, Craig. And this is Native Voice TV. Welcome to the show. And today our guest is Corrine Ostrike. And she's been here before, but we wanted her to come back because she's moving out of the area. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks for having me back. Well, we were anxious to hear about all your uh, projects that you've been working on. You've been very active in the community. And um, we want to hear about the Grammys, the Gathering of Nations, your Buffalo Project, all of the above. Yeah, I'm happy to talk about those things. Can you tell <laughs> us, give us some background on your tribe? Sure. So I am Ganwage Mohawk, and I am Oglala Lakota. And, but I grew up in the Bay Area of California, so I'm what you call an urban native. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but I'm happy to be here. Oh, well, you're very welcome. And you went to school here, too. I did. I went to school here, Fremont High School in Sunnyvale. I know it well. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you, let's see, you represent powwows.com. You're a correspondent for them, or tell us a little bit about that and yeah. some of the projects you've been working on. Yeah, I like to think that um, I'm a journalist and photographer with powwows.com, and although I've been doing a lot of, like, I guess you would call reporting lately, some live interviews, um, and I started in 2014 with article writing and uh, recently the last three years at Gathering of Nations I've moved on to doing actual live interviews on our Facebook page which has been really fun because I got to meet a lot of really amazing people. Ah. Hmm. So in the Gathering of Nations I'm always fascinated by that. Um, tell me what it's like to be there. Um, I. I refer to it as the Super Bowl of powwows. <laughs> it's pretty, it's pretty huge. It's That's that many people, I know. <laughs> yeah, and it's not like traditional powwows. If you're going to it um, and you're expecting a traditional powwow, it's definitely different. Um, but it's it's huge. There's a lot of people, um, and it's at Tingley Coliseum now. It's not in the pit anymore. So there's actual more space for the dancers as well as uh, a lot of things outside to do. They have the crafts that are there where people have their their wares and, and they have a whole food area and then they have stage 49 with native live music and- That's like, always a lot of fun, the, the so stage, much, uh, the so entertainment they have. This year they had a tribe called Red come oh. and that was a lot of fun. Yeah. Now, for the Grammys, weren't you representing somebody who was nominated for an award or something? Yeah, I um, this past year, uh, young spirit singers were nominated under the World Roots category, and uh, they invited powwows.com to come with them. Uh, so I was able to attend and walk the red carpet with them, which was a once in a lifetime experience. Now that was in LA? That was in Los was Angeles, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, I know, I saw on Facebook you had this gorgeous gown on oh, and I think you. we have a picture of it so let's take a look at her gorgeous <laughs> gown who made this gown oh so this dress is made by Norma Flying Horse uh, her design label is Redberry Woman and um, I specifically asked her if she would make that dress for me to wear because I thought how important it was to have this opportunity to represent indigenous fashion on the red carpet and so my mocks yes. were all my mocks, my dress, my makeup, the makeup artist, the jewelry, everything was gorgeous. made by indigenous designers. Thank you. Just beautiful. Have you heard from people around the world talking about your out, your your dress? Yeah, I actually when I left the um, the Grammys that evening, I got into I got into an Uber to drive to the after party. Uh huh. And the Uber driver recognized me because he said someone on his Facebook had shared the photo of the dress that powwows.com had posted earlier, which was kind of strange. <laughs> it was like a moment where I was like, oh, you, you know who I am? Oh, that's interesting. Um, but it was really neat to, oh, to represent exciting. native fashion in that way and kind of reclaim that non-indigenous space of the red carpet with, with native presence. 
I know that was so unique, and I, I was hoping to see it on television. <laughs> I mean, and really, that's an, a, a you know, yeah. really unique to have that there. And I think they even played in the lobby or sang in the yeah. lobby. They did on the carpet, actually. Uh -huh. oh, they okay. had um, they asked, you know, we would like to do this, and they said, oh, this would be perfect to do with our Grammys live interview, uh -huh. and the whole carpet went quiet. It was absolutely silent during their playing. And at the end, the whole place erupted in applause. It was, it was amazing. <laughs> How exciting. Yeah. Well, little by little, we're trying to get out there, right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, we just got to work harder to get. No kidding. Push our way out there. I know. Well, we're probably not on the selection committee either. <laughs> <laughs> Someday. Someday, that's true. <laughs> so back to the gathering of nations. Now, who did you meet that was really exciting out there? Uh, well, I got to meet uh, the, um, the musicians in Tribe Called Red. Um, it was uh, also a huge honor to meet Congresswoman Deb Halland. Oh, I think we have a picture with you, you with her. Yeah. Let's see, is there a picture? Nope, that's not her. That's but you can <laughs> tell us who this is. That, this is Miss Indian World, <laughs> and uh, she was crowned uh, on the Saturday, the last day, and um, she was amazing too. Very sweet, very in shock. And where is she from? Uh, she is Seminole, Seminole tribe. Hmm. Yeah. Very pretty. And she's the first of the Seminole tribe to win the crown also. So really? that was a big deal oh. for her. And yeah. that is such an elaborate pageant. I'm glad they don't wear swimsuits, but they do something related to the culture, don't they? Right, their talent portion is all uh, related in some way to their their culture and um, so her talent she shared was they have a traditional bonnet that they wear where they wrap their hair around it and so she demonstrated that which was really fascinating I'd never seen mm. that before I don't know very much about Seminole uh, right, the Seminole you. tribe or the Seminole nation so it was really neat to to see her demonstrate that oh, how exciting and I've seen, you know, I've been before, and, and the pageants are just the, uh, such talented young ladies. Oh, yeah. You know, and they're um, yeah. going to college and doing wonderful things in the community, and it's just wonderful to see them. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And you also got to meet an elected official. <laughs> yes, yeah. I got Let's to see meet. where she is. Yeah, <laughs> I know we have a picture of her. There she is. There she is. She actually. Uh, she was talking to Ruth Buffalo about the medallion that I'm wearing in that picture, and I was writing an article and totally into what I was writing, and I could feel someone watching me. So I looked up, and they were saying, oh, we love your medallion. And so I said, can I come down there and meet you? <laughs> and she said, yeah. And so, yeah, she it was. Um. The medallion represents missing and murdered indigenous women. Yeah. And um, it's just to remind us that we should never forget, never forget the women, never forget their names. Right. Yeah. Absolutely. That's a beautiful medallion. And Thank you. So, but that sounds like a real exciting experience being there. It was. I think meeting Congresswoman Deb Halland was the highlight of that entire trip. I have not, I'm not someone who usually uh, become speechless when I meet someone who is well known, but I had a lot of trouble finding some words. <laughs> <laughs> I think when I interviewed her, I had to get over that fact, but initially I was like uh, starstruck a little bit. Did you get to, you got to interview her a little bit? I did, yeah. What did she tell you? Um, I asked her um, about what it means to her so far to be in her capacity as Congresswoman. What has she been able to accomplish? Um, and uh, we talked a little bit about some of her amendments she's had put into the Violence Against Women Act, and it was really, it was really neat to talk about with her the importance of it being an indigenous woman who implicates, Im implements mm -hmm. those changes. Uh, so that was really, that was really neat. So you being a journalist, you're able to gain access to a lot of things like that. Right. Um, I just wonder, are there a lot of other native journalists there are, out in the field? Yeah, with a lot of like Indian country today. Well, I know there's NAJA, um, yeah. the Native American Journalists mm -hmm. Association. Okay, yeah. But um, I, I guess what I, my question was about uh, c covering uh, women's issues um, and violence issues. Right. Out there, are there 
quite a few journalists covering that now? I don't know if there are native journalists specifically covering it. I know that I've seen a lot of uh, articles written about that topic by non-native journalists. Um, and, th and that is something that we, I think, as a, as a community of journalism, are trying to work on, making sure that we are the ones speaking on our own behalf. Mm -hmm. um, but it's going to take time, I think. We're mm -hmm. slowly getting uh, getting more people in that field that are in, that are native, and and that's important. So, um, tell me a little bit about. Oh wait, there's another picture I want to go over real quickly before we go on to the the Buffalo Project, and um, maybe we can look at our last slide that we have. And where was this taken, and what does it represent? Uh, so this photo is uh, in San Francisco, California. And um, this was a campaign that I did with um, Native Giving. They are a nonprofit organization that works in Native American philanthropy. And so the shirt sales, a uh, portion of the proceeds went to their organization. And so they asked several people in the area with, and, and teamed up with Urban Native Era, which is run mm -hmm. by Joey Montoya. Mm -hmm. And uh, they needed some Native people to wear the clothing and to be in these photos that were going to be representing the shirts. And so I got to do that. Oh, that is really, that's a beautiful shirt. Is that something they're still marketing? Yeah, they're still selling it. Oh, well, it's still available. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> See if they have some large sizes. <laughs> okay, now I know you've been working on the Buffalo Project. Yes. Yes, and that's, um, Buffalo is actually an acronym. We don't work with buffaloes. <laughs> but Buffalo is an acronym for Brothers United for Feeling and Leading Openness. And uh, it was started as a Changemaker Initiative uh, fellowship with, in partnership with Ashoka. And we were tasked on taking a large social issue and coming up with an innovative way to solve that problem. And keeping in mind the issues of missing and murdered indigenous women, I wanted to tackle human trafficking um, because it's so pervasive, especially in our, in our communities. Mm -hmm. So um, I thought, what if there never even was human trafficking? What if the demand for it went down? What would that be? And so I created the Buffalo Project, which helps to establish emotionally healthy men. So we go into non-indigenous communities, um, like tech industry or like the, f you know, EMTs and other construction places where there's a lot of men in one area, and uh, my male instructors work with these men on giving them tools for how to process their emotions, how to build authentic relationships with each other, and to become emotionally healthy. Because if you have emotionally healthy men who believe they are sacred and believe they are protectors and not predators, then they will be protectors of women as opposed to predators of women. So that's that's what we do and that's our goal. Wow, that's a great concept. That's, that's wonderful, yeah. especially from the men's perspective because you're giving men, you know, not only an outlet and you're showing them how to live healthy lives and, and establish healthy relationships, but um, so many of these men are, are probably isolated and cut off mm -hmm. from, um, and they're not used to seeking help, you know, maybe on their own. Right. And I think you're giving them, you know, that access Thank or you. that um, um, okay to do that. Right. And in um, fact, in the men that we were interviewing before creating our curriculum, 80% of the men we interviewed did not have another male they could turn to in a time of deep mm -hmm. depression or stress. And that was a huge problem. And it contributed to high suicide rates. So, um, so it's definitely, definitely needed. And the reaction we've had from men who've gone through the program have all been positive. And even when the program was in its trial run, these men are still in connection with each other that went through that first trial run. They're still hmm. reaching out, hey, are you okay? Do you need anything? And, and a lot of them went in thinking they were just gonna help me and the project, but came out saying, hey, this helped me and I didn't know I needed it, which was kind of, Kind of cool to hear. <laughs> you've empowered them. I mean, you've given right. them yeah. something to live by. Right. And so, thank you. That's that's wonderful. Yeah, that's it's awesome. A great project. Thank you. And when you mentioned tech industries, I think 
you know, I, I saw the movie Wind River. I think right. that's the name of it, right? Yeah. And I guess near the res reservations more where there's either constructions or pipelines or whatever's going on there and there's a group of men that's mm -hmm. in, in actually in that movie um, that does happen a lot because yes. it's so rural yep. and um, it's easier to hide bodies I believe out in on the reservations or open uh, land where there isn't a lot of people right and that's why we have so many impacted women and right children. and and another benefit of the program in a place like these man camps would be that some of the men that are in these working in these construction areas are good men. They want to make money for their families and go home and they're there for a short period of time. They just want to keep their heads down and not interfere. But they need to be empowered to say something when they see something that's happening that's wrong or if a woman is in danger. And so our program tries to help, like you said, empower them to, to be protectors in that time um, and to know who the proper people are to address what they're seeing in those man camps mm -hmm. because like you said it's it's pervasive and it's affecting our indigenous communities right. directly and it's an environmental issue right because they're in there disrupting our environment so it's humanitarian issue it's an environmental issue it's all these things absolutely now you're moving back east are you going to continue with powwows.com Yes, I am. <laughs> I'm moving to uh, I'm moving to Minneapolis, Minnesota area, and so I will be doing probably more powwows in that area, um, wherever we are welcome. Mm -hmm. um, and if not, then just attending with my daughter since she started jingle dress dancing. So we'll oh, be going wonderful. we'll be going to powwows so that she can dance. <laughs> So have you covered your dream interview yet, or are you still trying to do that one? Are you? I don't know, <laughs> Deb Haaland was pretty much my dream interview. <laughs> but um, yeah, I don't know, maybe Adam Beach someday. <laughs> I actually met him at the Gathering of Nations. Did you well, really? I didn't talk to him, but I mean, took a picture with him. <laughs> but yeah, awesome. he was walk just walking around, you know, the, uh, the vendors area. That's awesome. And there he was, and we grabbed him. <laughs> I heard he's a very humble man. Very handsome man. <laughs> <laughs> I'll let you go. Okay. <laughs> okay. Sorry, okay. Well, I'm I don't like it. Say after that. I mean, well, <laughs> okay. Here I am. It's, it, yeah, he <laughs> left me speechless. <laughs> <laughs> hey, well, um, Benjamin Bratt. Okay. <laughs> no. At, um, Adam Beach. <laughs> Adam Beach. <laughs> okay, Johnny Depp. You know, my wife is. Re she's related to Johnny Depp. Really? And, wow. And he, he has claimed he has native blood in him too. So. Anyway, we, won't, we won't worry about the, the Lone Ranger and Tom movie or anything, or anything he's done about that. We won't talk about that. But um, is there anything else you're, you're involved in, Corrine? I don't know. I think that, is pretty, that pretty much sums it up for now. But you never know. More things might be. You were involved in the Women's March, too, in San Jose yeah. uh, last year, right? And not yeah, last this year, year, not this year. Mm -hmm. I, was, I was unwell this year but, and wasn't able to attend. I was actually supposed to be in D.C., but um, that's right. I yeah. That. yeah, yeah. So uh, that was really that was really neat to do. The they kind of had somebody to do an opening blessing and land acknowledgement for the for the march, and she didn't. She wasn't able to show up, and so they saw me walking in my jingle dress and said, "Hey, you!" <laughs> 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 and I, yeah, I was willing to to assist. So that was really oh, neat. Oh, that's great. I think that's when I first met you too. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. We met at the women's march. I came up to you march. and I said, "Hey, let's take a selfie." <laughs> uh -huh. yeah. Oh, that's great. Well, I want to wish you a lot of luck in your new endeavors, back east. And where are we getting? Are you moving to? It's going to be the Minneapolis area. Minneapolis yeah, area. suburbs. Yeah, yeah. So there's a lot of tribes back there, oh, yeah. walls and so forth. Probably more than out here. Yeah. Definitely. Oh, and well. you took a lot of photos at the Stanford powwow the last few years. I remember seeing oh, yeah, I a do. lot of those. Every year. I go every year, every all on the Saturday, and uh, that's kind of our Mother's Day tradition. So I come, I'm out there with my camera, and I take pictures, and then every year I always make, I put them out for everyone. I say, tag tag your relatives and, and keep them if you want. I'll send you the, the file. It's my gift to the community. And you're a great photographer. You didn't, didn't even mention that. Oh, <laughs> but you are. And I've seen a lot of the photos that you've put online thanks. of the different powwows. And uh, I always see a lot of my relatives in there, too. 
Yeah. So that's always great. fun. So are you going to continue with your photography? Oh I yeah. I assume. Yeah, that's that's my art. That's mm -hmm. my 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 good for my heart escape. <laughs> so when work is tough, then I still have my art form that I turn to. So. Uh huh. Well, I hope you continue writing a lot too. Oh yeah. And you know, your journalism and and because there's so much goes unsaid, you know, within our community, and we need more talented people out there that are writing and advocating for for us. Right. And so I hope you continue with that, and and um, we'll see you on Native Times or something. <laughs> Hopefully, so. I got to be in HuffPost this year, which was great. Oh, you did. Yeah. And which so. one? At Huffington Post. Oh wow! Yeah, I wrote a Thanksgiving piece. So, oh, that's yeah. pretty exciting. It was exciting. Yeah. yeah, I love writing, so I will continue absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that is great. Well, we wish you a lot of luck, and also with the Buffalo Project. Are you going to continue that? Yes. Back east. Yeah, my that's capacity great. right now is more in educating on what we do and who we are. Mm -hmm. uh, it's my male instructors who run the program. I think that's very important that they have a safe space with all men mm -hmm. in order to work on their emotions in that in that in that space. So um, I just go out and talk about what we're doing and the issue of missing and murdered Indigenous women and uh, human trafficking in general to bring awareness. Can you tell our audience more, a little bit more, because we do have another guest coming to talk about missing and murdered indigenous women, but in Santa Clara County, we're having more recognition, or not, I would say more education of the people, the public, of the issue with missing and murdered women, indigenous women. Right. Because people really weren't aware that the statistic is so much higher than mm -hmm. any other ethnic group. Right, and that's, it's a huge issue. And it, like you said, a lot of people are totally unaware of it mm -hmm. existing. Um, I know that when I wear my medallion around, it offers a conversation starter. Mm -hmm. So people will say, oh, I like your medallion, what is that about? And that gives you or me an opportunity to educate. Um, but yeah, it's, there's a lot happening recently um, in regards to missing right. murdered indig indigenous women and girls and two spirit, it, it's all, it's all, kind of in the last maybe five to ten years, kind of picking up and gaining yes. a little more attention. I think, especially with the Wind River movie. Right. right. Um, so all of those things, bringing attention to it, are helpful. So. And in we're broadcasting from Santa Clara County, California. And California, for the first time, has declared May 5th as Missing and Murdered Indigenous Women Day in right. California. And that is rare. I mean, it's the first time right. it's ever happened. So um, we're thankful that um, it's getting the recognition that it should so yeah. these people are not forgotten, whether they're women or children, male or female. Right. It still affects families. Oh, yeah. And tragically. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. So, well, we want to thank you for coming on the show. Thank you. And I guess next time you come to visit California, <laughs> <laughs> you'll tell us all about your adventures back east. Yes. About the snow and the <laughs> lightning bugs. And <laughs> oh, yes. I'm very excited for a Minnesota winter. It'll be very different. <laughs> It'll be very different from California. And make sure you take all your coats, all your clothes, yes. and pile them layers. on. Layers <laughs> and layers. Could, yeah, because your blood's going to be pretty thin for a while. Huh? Know, huh? <laughs> that California weather. So thank you for being here. Thank and Craig? Yeah, do you know how to, you know how to Indian ski? No. Oh. I don't either. I need snow. <laughs> I mean, in Oklahoma, we had a little bit of snow, but you know, but not like in Minnesota. Not yeah, that's um, pretty. But I, I, I need to know because um, I used to, you know, downhill ski, and I knew how to do that. But there's got to be a way. <laughs> I mean, there's be something yeah, my way is stay in the house, <laughs> stay, in the, stay indoors by fire. But, um, um, but being in Minnesota, uh, I've been there, and um, um, that's where. Mystic Lake, I believe, is there's a, um, but there's a lot of outdoor activities there. Yeah. And you can go camping. Oh yeah. <clears throat> and do a lot of things you can't do here. Oh yeah. Obviously, but um, um, stay close. I mean, stay. 
When you come back, I'll tell you what's new in Sunnyvale. Great. I'm excited. <laughs> I'm sure that a lot will have changed. Yeah. Yeah. The yeah. area more changes. people. Yeah. <laughs> more, more people. More people. More so, traffic. Uh, Craig, yeah. I, um, I want to congratulate you on your tennis team. It did wonderful this past year, and you went all the way to the finals or something? Oh, no, we did. Yeah, we went to nationals. Um, I have a 14 and under team, and we're um, multicultural. Um, we have Indians, we have uh, African Americans, um, white Americans, and Asian Americans. Wow. On team. So we're a true multicultural team. And um, we went to the USTA National Championship in Orlando, Florida, which is their headquarters. Wow. And we got to play there, where we finished six out of 16 teams. Mm. Well, congratulations. So, well, that's thank you. wonderful. Thank you. And we wonderful. capped it off by going to Disney World. <laughs> oh, well that, that's a good prize. <laughs> the kids got to miss school. so they. Oh, that's great. Yeah, well, thank good. you for being here, Corrine, and we'll miss you. Thank you. <laughs> we'll, miss, you but we'll see you on, <laughs> on Facebook, right? Yes, yes. <laughs> thank you for joining us, and we'll see you next week on Native Voice TV.